Hello, so this is spiritual grief number seven and I hope you all enjoyed uh, the soul ceremony last week. I found it a very uh, sacred thing to share and I've been doing it myself quite a few times. I uh, find it really helpful when you're going through grief to do soul retrieval work. I find it really helpful to connect in with your loved ones on the other side yourself uh, to cultivate that relationship and to also connect in with your ancestors, your lineage, uh, because often we're, we're struggling in this paradigm from things that have carried on down the lineage or that we're contracted to help our lineage uh, by changing our lives on the earth at this time. So it's a powerful, powerful thing to do. And um, so I hope you found some time to do that for yourselves. And now this week I want to talk um, quite a bit about the dark night of the soul. And I have... Uh, a lot to say about this, having been through a dark night of the soul myself three times now. Um, so it's not something that's new to me. Um, I have really experienced the depth of this and I think it is so important to talk about the dark night when it comes to grief. Because if I know anything, it's that um, going through uh, the death process, it is the dark night of the soul. So whenever it happens to you, it will be because you've had a sense of loss or change or your whole world has like ricocheted and turned into something totally different. That is the dark night of the soul. Uh, it's often, uh, some say it's kind of like a, a death, ego, ego death. <laughs> I knew there was the wrong way around. Ego death, so it's like um, you're losing who you were. And I feel that, yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. But it's also, for me, the thing that I've already stepped into the dark night of the soul is is the questioning of what a soul's consciousness is. That's come up for me massively in the dark night. Uh, questioning my views on society and questioning my views on myself and my relationships. So I've had uh, a dark night three times, as I mentioned. And the first time round was when I was... Uh, quite lost. I was in my 30s. I was working uh, in a nine to five, well, nine to six job. The hours were usually longer. I was hustling and grinding and living the lifestyle of London, quite hedonistic. Uh, but my soul was completely lost. And I just didn't feel very happy in what I was doing at all. And what happened was I kind of pushed myself into a dark night. I had a, a breakup. I lost my nan and everything, everything kind of fell apart and I kind of had a breakdown and I questioned everything and it felt like that everything had gone very dark. It felt like all the light had gone out of my life. So I wasn't happy with the way it was and then it all broke apart and then I wasn't happy on the other side. It was like nothing was working. There was no joy. It felt really, I just felt really lost um, and I guess there was an element of um, depression in it, sadness, and a, a whole lot of pain. And what kind of pulled me out of this dark night was my first spiritual quest. So I was on um, a path of um, awakening. I, I'd seen a, my nan's spirit for the first time. I started to explore acting. I then went on to do writing. I, I trained as a healer and my soul was just getting bigger and brighter. And as, as someone said, when I first started training, the lights come back on in your eyes. And I see that as soul integration, that people have their light and their spark back. And that, that kind of taught me uh, the first sort of stage about death not being the end, um, that loved ones lived on because I experienced that. And that's what I've shared a lot in this series to try and, um, you know, understand that, that we are grappling and um, grappling with different sort of ways if we are spiritual of how to approach death. And I really wanted to bring all that to the table because I don't feel like it's talked about. I mean, when we're talking about eternal life, we got a lot to wrestle with. There's, there's a, a big spectrum, a big multi-dimensional reality to explore out there. And then my second dark night of the soul was uh, probably when quite a few people had theirs. Uh, it was when COVID hit. 
and I was currently writing my second play and I'd already started to question quite a bit of the stuff that I was channeling. I was looking at um, transhumanism and an agenda, um, a timeline that I feel that we might be going down and I was kind of pulling apart the idea of technology and it's the way it's taking over the human soul and I was kind of bringing this all through in my writing and didn't quite realize how much truth there was out there and uh, how much that was actually taking place and the and as sort of COVID went on and I started to pull apart the whole shadow of society and um, started to look more deeply into um you know whether whether I could see my dad when I was caring for him whether the medical care he was offered helped him and the system let him down and we know that the systems are struggling I you know we were all questioned to ask sort of choices about body sovereignty at this time um, and it made me go very deep down a rabbit hole and I started to realize that I'd put a lot of faith and trust in people and institutions and places that perhaps I shouldn't have put that faith in perhaps I shouldn't have been naively uh, believing that everybody was out to help me and I feel like as an empath and um a healer and a, a light worker that can sometimes be your problem that you're actually like oh yeah the what the world everyone's there's no evil the world's a good place and that's not the full truth there is a, a huge shadow in people and in humanity um and in in the multi-dimensional realms so beyond that which I call very anti-human and um, which I've done a lot of, of teachings about but as I was getting to grips with that I, I catapulted right into a dark night of the soul because I questioned everything um, and everyone and I, I lost my faith there was a lot of sort of healers and spiritual people that I followed that I suddenly couldn't resonate with anymore because it felt like that they were looking at this one level of spirituality and not looking deeper um, and I, I, I was like, I feel like a lot of institutions and things have been um, infiltrated and are actually working for an anti-life agenda. Um, and then my third and most recent Dark Night of the Soul is going through uh, witnessing and my father's pain and death uh earlier this year um and i i feel like it's actually more than his um passing i'm actually going through uh really understanding that if we are multi-dimensional on this on this plane we can tap into different realities this is what soul spirit all of that understanding is now that doesn't suddenly stop when we pass over the veil there is no, um, oh, we just all go up um, and enjoy the space of eternal life and then we come back again. I feel that what I talk about and I'm bringing in much more of is that our souls get fragmented in life. So uh, just because we've passed over, does that mean we've passed over with our whole healed soul self? Quite possibly not. Um, does it mean that we've all got to the right light quite possibly not that's why people do sp spiritual rescue does that mean that a darker anti-life agenda isn't playing out on the other side quite possibly not i feel that we're at this huge uh, level of spiritual warfare and that travels out into the all dimensions all reality all timelines and so this was uh, my further dark night of the soul that I'm currently going through. Now, it's not something I haven't navigated before. Uh, I am an old soul. I've been, lived many lifetimes. I have gone through uh, the different dimensions. I've gone through the underworld. I've gone through the middle realm and I have experienced lifetimes in the upper realms, um, pure spiritual consciousness. I have I remember and recollect or recollect, recollect recall that was the word I was looking for uh, all of these different dimensions so my soul has a memory of a lot of these things but 
I, I feel like there was a <laughs> probably a maze and a mother, a crone journey in my three dark nights of the soul because at the start, even though it was really painful, my questioning was about, I was kind of living a 3D reality back then. I was hoping the job and the relationship um, and, you know, my nan and all of those things that kind of made me happy and safe and secure in my younger world. And then they all broke apart. And I remember getting a reading from someone and they, they my nan came in and she said, do you think you've lost everything? And you've actually gained everything. You've gained the light back. And that was when I started to move on into my soul's true purpose uh, at that time when I was coming out of the dark night and going back into the sort of the light of my new trajectory. And the second time it happened to me, I felt like uh, I was definitely going through the mother phase because I had this protective energy come in. When I saw um, the corruption play out in society, I just wanted to take care of people how I felt, my people, suddenly I felt so strongly about humanity as this one consciousness. And it was like I could see through all the divide and conquer texts and thought, what, what is this horrible entity playing out in our programming that we are, are not coming together in unity? And I, I felt a real sort of motherly love for the world and for the people in it that we could find our way to come together. and. I still feel that that is that is that is totally possible, and that's a timeline I'm hoping to open up that we all like really, from the bottom up, uh, really take control of of the earth and nurture it and each other. And then the third dark night, which I'm still passing through, um, and who knows how long it'll take. Um, I already know it's going to be a big journey of remembering all of my initiations and teachings, um, probably from the Egyptian timeline that I'm currently working on and uh, writing about. And that was very much the crone, <laughs> the uh, the shadow priestess, the, the queen's consciousness that has been through this underworld, has has battled with the real dark forces and come back and understood what's happened to us all on a multi-dimensional soul level and that includes our ancestors and our loved ones who passed on so that's big that's huge but I kind of wanted to bring that into the consciousness today of why the dark night of the soul is so important to for me and also to bring it into everybody's awareness that somebody out there is holding your hand and going I understand I've walked through it too because the hardest thing with the dark night is the sense of isolation um, and the sense of um, crisis. Because what I do know the dark night feeds in you is it will be where you break apart your belief in everything. It might be a belief in a relationship that you trusted in. It might have been a belief in the death process that you thought about. Or it might be a belief in uh, your job or your society or anything like that, that suddenly you have, because it's a dark night of the soul, it's a spiritual crisis and you go through questioning everything that you thought that you knew. And the wonderfully powerful thing of it is, is out the other side, you, you, your soul is pushing you onto your real purpose. It's saying, wake up. This is not enough for you. Your your faith and your beliefs are growing, expanding. Your multidimensional layering is getting stronger. So that can mean if you were living a life not connected to your soul, suddenly you're on your soul's path. If you're living a life not connected to your heart, suddenly you're aware of higher heart consciousness, which is a sense of um, community and unity spirit. And then if it's a th if it's the the third phase it will be a sense of completely connected with spirit and having all of those uh higher light wisdom tribes walk with you what i see as the mother goddess and essence the pure source spirit uh named sophia to me so yeah i think it's important to say breathe through this phase Breathe, be in your body, 
and do a lot of healing. There is nothing more important than taking a step back um, on this grief process and saying, I need time for me to heal. And that is not often what you get. Um, we, we, grief and pain, we try and race through these. And I've done it uh, different ways. I've made those mistakes. Uh, the first dark night, I was medicating myself, um, drinking and partying and pushing myself to the limit. I just wanted to feel uh, ecstatic. I wanted to feel joy so desperately that I, and I didn't want to feel this pain. Uh, and the second time, as in a lot of us, we were forced into hermit modes, we were restricted, we were at home. And this made me go really in and, and pull in what, what, what was really going on in my consciousness, what was really going on in my soul, who I really was. And more recently, I've kind of gone through a process more of um, doing various things, like knowing when I just need to be in stillness and to sob and to cry and to release and take that time. And also knowing when I need to connect and be with people and uh, feel that support, knowing when I need to speak. I mean, there is a lot of uh, sort of anti, uh, let's not, let, let. how do we approach this? I mean, some people don't want to bring up and speak about death. And I know that it's a, it's a difficult subject, um, or the dying, or, or of, all of that. But actually, it's it's really important that we do speak and we do connect. And that leads me on to what's really important, and that is how we get through this um, this dark night of the soul. What techniques, what tools, what things have helped me? And I feel like, um, as I've mentioned, that, that healing is the most important part. So when you're going through a spiritual crisis, gather up your spiritual mentors around you. It often can mean that you're starting to resonate with new people, uh, new ways of being, you're transitioning. And that does mean letting go of some of the old teachers. And I, f I found this a very painful part of my path. Um, the people that I looked up to that I used to listen to and be really inspired by, suddenly I wasn't resonating with them at all anymore. And that can be really difficult to say oh okay I, I've evolved I've grown past that and actually it's not nourishing to my soul listening to that anymore um, and that can include you know everyone and that can include me if I'm not resonating with where you are on the path delete it <laughs> stop you know let let go of that and I, I think that's the other important part about decoding from those people we would have um, sort of invested in in a, a way of um, people that we were like, oh, that that really helps me, and that that does. I think that the amazing thing on a, a spiritual journey is that when you step up and step to the next level, um, your tribe steps with you, or there are people behind you waiting for you to step up, and you can like reach up a hand and go, I'm going up. And I love that image of that 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 we rise together. So that's a, that's a big one, and it. And it will mean, you know, letting go of someone um, and just, yeah, really imagine that, like decoding them, taking them out of the system. And that leads me on to the other part, which is um, that you, there is systems that you've been plugged into, whether it's like a, an old work system that used to work with you in a, a 3D realm or a relationship or um, a loved one that has passed on, you know, this is all levels of grief. Now, you don't want to be corded and attached to levels of them that were the distorted elements. You want to be aligned with uh, the love with them or realigned with the love for a new career, a new job, or realigned with love in a new relationship. And that does mean letting go of everything. And one of the most powerful meditations I did for myself um, when I was um, transitioning through relationships was taking out the cords to the old person when I didn't feel like I was ready to let go and just asking what the lesson was and as soon as I released those big cords in a meditative space between us 
um, I could see somebody new come in um, and then feel what well, what would that energy be like um, and it was like a, a raising of consciousness so decoding from the old paradigms and that means systems as well so places that you've worked or things that have been keeping you trapped and keeping you down and keeping you in this um, deep rest depressed state dark night uh, release those let them go and I will do um, um, some decoding meditation on on this um this for you as well so we will be going through that and then the other the other um few methods that have really helped me um i'm an energy healer so sitting and giving the body soothing there's it's so important it's so feminine um it's so um uh, being rather than doing and that might be energy work if you're a Reiki healer or receiving, putting on sound bath music. I'd be like gently healing my body. So it's slowly giving yourself the space to feel safe again. Because a dark night and grief will make you feel very unsafe, very unsettled. It feels like you've got no footing in the world. You don't really know where you're at. You haven't landed in the new phase. You're in this kind of... Uh, ugly limbo stage um, and it, it can feel quite terrifying because there's probably quite a few traumatic memories uh, going on that, that has transitioned you through this and sent you catalyzing into a dark night and your body is trying to integrate and understand that. Sometimes a dark night can happen even from going down past life timelines and seeing all the horrific spiritual persecution that takes place down there um, and that knocks the body into unsafety um, and triggering uh, the death the death state um, images of you know how you've been killed horrifically before but let's remember um, which is another healing technique that I I feel is so valuable and one thing that I always offer when I'm offering past life regressions and soul sessions and soul history and soul her story and soul gnosis knowledge is that we have been we have lived many times before and that means we've risen up and come back many times before and um, so we've gone through the death state there's the intermediate realms where we can be there's knowledge in there and we've come back uh, to talk about it now so I feel like it's really important to go down these timelines and remind yourself um, that there is no death and that you can actually pick up your highest part of yourself, which is the last healing I find is, is very important, connecting with the highest wisdom keeper part of you, your higher self, your un harmed soul fragment part, which is part of what they call a monad consciousness, or connecting with that divine source, which I connect with the Sophia consciousness. Uh, it's pure, it channels me through, it keeps me aligned, it keeps me grounded, it keeps me safe, and it's always a space I can navigate no matter what energies are knocking me off course. Because I think another thing that's really important to know is that when your energy is low, when you're struggling with a dark night, when you're going through trauma, when you're going through grief, you are rife for uh, energetic attacks. Uh, you are rife for uh, negative energies coming in because your vibration is just there at a lower state. So there's nothing more important. I mean, it's very important anyway, protecting yourself. Um, and I will be doing that again um, in the meditation about protection. But I think sometimes we can think it's not an important thing to do or... There's often uh, about, you know, it'd be like, oh, we'll go out in nature and, 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 you know, raise your energy. And that's all important. But you're raising your energy uh, and you've also got to protect it. So you can get attacked when your energy is low, but you can also get attacked when your energy is high. So what protection is, it's saying, no, this is my energy and I do not consent to any kind of energetic vampires, dark entities, uh, any attacks from the astral realm when you're asleep. Um, all of this happens when you're going up in consciousness, you're going deeper through the dark night of the soul. And it's really important to say to, to the world, to the universe, uh, my soul's precious and I'm going to protect it at all times.
Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about protection and its methods because I get asked about this a lot from clients. Uh, it tends to be uh, go to shares to to talk to <laughs> to talk to someone about uh, working in these more shadow realms. Um, so. Yeah, so protective bubbles. So there are, if you don't know about protective bubbles, I really recommend that you start doing them. Uh, it's a spiritual hygiene 101, which means you're pulling a bubble of light around yourself, like a protective force field. You have an aura anyway surrounding your body. You're pulling, you're imagining that this bubble of light is surrounding you all underneath your feet, uh, around your aura, around your crown, your back, your front, uh, and you're wrapping yourself in a bubble of light. This is a really important thing to do both morning and evening time or when you feel like you most need it if you're traveling through a busy area, uh, going on the tube in London, for example, get that shield up. And now, uh, beyond that, uh, a great way to protect yourself is commanding it. I am completely protected from anything that's lower energy than 100% pure love and light. Uh, commanding it can be very important to do as well. Um, and the other ways, um, you know, there is wonderful ways like uh, putting some sage around yourself, clearing your energetic field. If you're going into um, a group um, and you're wanting to clear everybody's energy there. But uh, a more advanced kind of protection practice, I find it's good to tailor it to where you're at. So there is the um, black rose protection practice that I use. And this would be uh, pulling out a bubble of light around your body and putting uh, what I see as black rose netting around your auric field and then wrapping yourself up in a very beautiful, shimmering, black, uh, reflective bubble of light. Um, so that it means that what you're doing is to the outside world, your light is slightly dimmed, you're more in the shadow. And this is great to do if you are going through a dark night, you're, you're fragile, you're slightly vulnerable, and you're wanting to protect your aura. Basically, you are a big old light bearer. That's how you're walking through the world if you're on the spiritual path. And your light is bright and it's blazing out into the world. And then you get hurt or you're dealing with something or you're having a, a wrestle or a, a spiritual war maybe in your dream space and you don't even know about it. You need protection uh, because like anything, everything's attracted to the light. Oh, is that where I go? Uh, can I go towards the light? Can I get energy from that? Can I take from that space? There's a lot of light over here. It's just like you're a big blazing battery. And so I use that um, protective bubble to, to darken the energy to everybody else if I don't want to shine that brightly or I'm doing underworld shadow work. The uh, Another great bubble of light, if you're wanting to do the opposite, would be the golden bubble of light. And this I see as putting um, beautiful golden roses all around the aura, right in a bubble of light, um, and then putting a, a golden liquid light shield right around that circle um, so that's reinforcing it that it's 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 strong um, but also that the auric field can breathe and the golden light is great when you want to be charismatic you want to shine you want to go in and meet more of your tribe you want to meet ascended beings and you're wanting to like raise up the collective it's like the royal consciousness the divine template and it's just a beautiful bubble to immerse yourself in say you're leading a spiritual workshop or you're and you you want to protect your energy but you also want to radiate it out as golden liquid light it's it's, it's a great energy to attract people in but you're also protecting your auric field and not just giving out, giving out, giving out energy. It's, it's coming in to be received. And then there's the white light. Uh, and this is great if you're really wanting to tap into the most divine, highest level of source. Uh, the white light, that's just pure crystalline. Um, you often get attuned uh, using a crystalline. Uh, it's a great thing to, to clear energies and align with the highest frequency possible. So then, and it's also unconditional love. So putting the white roses around you um, of pure heart-based consciousness, and then putting a white bubble of light around. This is if you really just want to move around the world in quite angelic high consciousness. 
um, and tap in um, to the spiritual realm, but also um, you're blocking yourself from anything in the lower dimension, lower frequencies. So that is a great protective practice to use. Um, and I really recommend any of those. There are also um, protection practices that you can use throughout the chakras. Uh, our chakras, I've done many chakra guidances along this course, um, but they they get harvested, they get attacked, our energy gets taken, and they weaken. And at any point, you, through your mind's eye, you can just say, can I shut my, can I close down my chakras? Some say you shouldn't shut down the crown because you don't want to cut off that connection. Um, some say you shouldn't uh, fully close the root chakra because you don't want to close your connection to the earth. But just affirming, can I close them down and keep them safe if you feel you need to, especially if you're around somebody that triggers you or, or you tend to feel depleted afterwards, shut those chakras down, just see them all closing, going down your body, closing them all, but keeping anchored into the earth and anchored into spirit. Um, and that will be great with your um, auric bubble as well to so just keep you really um, contained when you need it. It's like double protection. But with that being said, do remember to really anchor into the earth and anchor into spirit. Both of those are really important. It's always important to be grounded. Um, we can forget these spiritual practices when we're feeling very low, but we need our earth connection and we need our spirit connection because we are thrown right off balance and we're often uh, feeling hopeless and we've lost our faith. So we need to say to spirit, I'm, I'm still connecting with my higher wisdom, my higher self. And that leads me to, yeah, keeping anchored and activated with, with your highest light, even though you are in a phase where your soul has been destroyed and your life has broken apart. Remember that you are a soul um, navigating a spiritual experience. You know, you've gone past just the human dimension. So trust that it's way bigger than you can understand right now. And just keep going with as much of an open heart as you can. Um, knowing that you're on the pathway to some sort of enlightenment, but whatever that enlightenment looks like, we don't know yet. You know, we're all on this journey. And keep your eye on the light and the dark is the best way to be because then you become a braver, bigger soul. Uh, you're not spiritually bypassing the problems. Uh, you're feeling all your dense, heavy emotions. And the way a priestess would do it um, is to transmute them, feel them, pull them up through the chakra column and release them into a, a violet flame of transmutation. So I think I want to say, uh, I know I want to say more than anything, that this journey is difficult to navigate. The dark night of the soul, uh, losing a loved one, grief of any kind is a tough, it's tough on the body, it's tough on the mind, it's tough on the spirit. I do want to add that we shouldn't be alone with it. And I hope that this has in some way given you a sense of light at the end of the tunnel, a sense that there's more, a sense of empowerment that you can connect with your loved ones and a sense of that you are so much more than this body and to break down that paradigm and to get connected with your light and the light in everybody, every human being that is surrounding you, whether on the earth or whether they've passed on, to remember uh, we are these beings full of light. And now to protect your light and to step into that place, uh, I recommend that you try the meditation and I'm going to leave it off this one and put it on separately um, so you'll just find it as um, the energy protection meditation on this channel. So do enjoy, uh, get really comfortable and nourished in your own energy, declutter all of those cords and yeah, keep on your spiritual ascension journey because at the other side of a dark night of the soul is a sunny, golden, glowing morning. Take care.